All right, welcome back. In the last video, we were looking at the shear diagram and we were coming up with the equations that represented the shear between A and B and B and C. And that gave us, or those equations, gave us what our shear diagram should look like. It represented our shear diagram in equation form. And in this video, we're gonna go ahead and do the same approach, except now we're gonna look at the moment diagram. So we're gonna use the equation approach to try to figure out what the equations are that represents the moment between a and B and B and C. So I'm actually going to go ahead and clean up the space here so we have some room to write and work. So this is where we're going to do our moment diagram. M and our units are going to be kip foot. And remember, whenever we try to come up with equations to represent shears and moments, we want to do it between spans that have very simple and constant or uniform loading or just no loading at all. It just makes the equation approach a lot easier. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna look at this first span here between points A and B, and I wanna to try to use that information to come up with the equation that represents the internal moments in that span. So for that first span, I'll just write here, first span, I'm gonna go ahead and take a random cut somewhere below, between A and B, and it doesn't matter where, as long as it's between points A and B, because that's what's gonna represent our internal moment on that span. So that first cut would look something like this. Here's point A, we have our 2.5 kips here, and we have our internal moment here, which I will call M of X, because this is gonna be a function of X, and X is gonna be taken from point A to the right. Any point along here is just point X, a distance X from point. So what I can do is I can actually sum moments about this point here, which I'll just call O, and that's a distance X from A. So if I did sum of moments about point O, and I said this was positive, and that needs to be equal to zero, then I can say M of X, right, this positive moment here, minus 2.5 kips times x, right, 2.5 kips times some distance x from a, and x represents the distance where this cut is located or this internal moment is that we're trying to find. That's equal to zero. So if I just add 2.5x to both sides, I'm gonna get m of x is equal to 2.5x kip feet. Now here's something interesting. If we actually derive this moment equation that we got for this first span, A, B, you'll notice something interesting. So if I take dm dx of this equation, I'm actually gonna get, well, 2.5x, if we differentiate that with respect to x, it's just 2.5 kips. That's interesting, right? Well, the shear between point A and B well, the equation for that shear was V of X is equal to 2.5 kips. So this 2.5 kips was our shear equation for that span, AB. Now that's really interesting because that tells us that the shear equation here is the slope of this moment equation here. And we'll use that information in more complex examples later on to try to figure out what our moment diagram should look like. But anyway, we have this moment equation here, 2.5x kip feet, and that represents the moment between A and B. Well, since this is x raised to only the one power, we know that this is linear. We're gonna have our moment diagram go up here to point B, this is A, this is B, and if we plugged in x is equal to three feet, right? So let's say x was equal to three feet, then m of x, which is three feet, is gonna be 2.5 times three kip feet. And that gives us our moment at mid-span at three feet of 7.5 kip feet. So this value right here is 7.5. Five, this one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down so we have some more room to work with. And now I'm gonna look at this span here between B and C, and we're gonna come up with an equation that represents the moment for this span. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that span two. And if we take a cut somewhere between B and C, this is what our diagram is gonna look like. We're gonna have point A here. We're gonna have our 2.5 kip reaction there. Then we have point B, our five kip reaction, or point load there, 
And then we have this cut here, right? And our internal moment is going to look like this, m of x. And now our datum, where I'm going to say x starts from, is actually going to be from point b, because now we're looking at the span b all the way up to c. So I don't really need x to start at a, because we already have an equation that represents span a, b. So I'm going to go ahead and take x from point b. This is three feet and this distance from B to some cut where this internal moment is located is a distance X from B. So I'm going to go ahead and sum the moments here, sum the moments about point O and I'll just call point O there. And if I say this is positive, then I'll have this positive MX, right? This one right here. And then minus five kips times this distance X, right? And that represents this point load creating a moment about point O, which is a distance X from B. And this should be positive, right? Because it creates a counterclockwise moment about point O. And then I have this 2.5 kips here. So I know that's going to create a negative moment, right? Because it's going to create a negative moment about point O. It's going to go clockwise. But the distance that this 2.5 kips is located from point O is actually this 3 feet plus whatever distance this is, which is x. So I'm going to write 3 feet plus x, and all of this is going to be equal to 0. And so now it's just a matter of algebra plus 5x minus 7.5, right? 2.5 times 3, and then minus 2.5 times x, that's minus 2.5x, and that's equal to 0. I'll have this 5x and minus 2.5x, so now I have m of x plus 2.5x minus 7.5, and that's equal to 0. And if I add these two terms to the other side, I get m of x is equal to 7.5 minus 2.5x kip feet. So that is our equation for the moment, the internal moment between b and c. And that kind of makes sense, right? This moment equation is actually in point slope form, right? You have this 7.5 here, and then you have this minus some constant times x, and that constant represents the slope between points b and c. Now another cool thing is that if we derive this moment equation with respect to x, we're actually going to get the shear equation between points b and c. So let's actually do that. dm dx. So I'm just going to derive this moment equation with respect to x. So the derivative of 7.5, which is a constant, is 0. Then I have this minus 2.5 times x. And if I derive that, well, that's just minus 2.5 kips. So if you remember earlier, our shear equation was minus 2.5 kips for this span between b and c. And that's exactly what this derivative is giving us when we derive this moment equation between points B and C. So anyway, if we take this moment equation, we should be able to draw a straight line from B to C. And this equation represents this line, where this equation here represents this line. So what is so neat about these two equations, equation one and equation two? And equation one and two represent span 1, which is between A and B, and span 2, which is between B and C. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is actually clean this screen up. So there you go. I just rewrote these two equations that we derived previously. M of x is 2.5 x kip feet and 7.5 minus 2.5 x kip feet. And these are the two lines that we drew from these two equations. So what's cool about these equations is that we can actually plug in x anywhere along this moment diagram and get the corresponding moment value, the internal moment. So let's say I wanted the moment here at a distance of, I don't know, 0.8 feet from A. Well, since I know the equation between a and b, it's this first equation here, I can say x is equal to 0 0.8 feet. And if I plug that into this equation, is equal to 2.5 times x, which is 0 0.8 feet, I should get 2 kip feet. So I know that the moment at 0.8 feet away from a is 2 kip feet. Now what if I wanted the moment somewhere over here? 
let's say it's a distance 5.1 feet. Here we have to be careful. You might think that we can just take 5.1 and plug it in as x for equation 2. But if you remember, when we derived this moment equation, we actually took the datum from point B. So x is taken from point B up to this point here. And that value is actually 5.1 feet minus this distance from A to B, which is 3 feet, right? A to B is 3 feet, and our datum started at B for this second equation. That's actually 2.1 feet. So x is 2.1 feet. And we're going to use that information and plug it into 2 and get the corresponding moment right there. So m of x is equal to 2.1 feet is equal to 7.5 minus 2.5 times x, which is 2.1 feet. Kip foot, and that's equal to 7.5 minus 5.25 kip feet and 7.5 minus 5.25 should be 2.25 kip feet. So we know that the moment right there is 2.25 kip feet.